I needed the money, damn it. I was two weeks behind rent on my crappy apartment. My junky car is falling apart, and I owe Bambi a Benjamin. So here I was, driving cross-country on a hopeless search for a fiancé that had disappeared just days before the wedding. Ten years of police investigations and expensive private eyes turned up nothing. Luckily for me, her dude just couldn't stop thinking about her and when people are desperate and have nowhere else to turn because they have tried everything else, they turn to me. I needed to practice my recorder before putting in, so I stopped nearby an old shack, figuring its rustic yet lonely vibe would enhance the deepness of my tune. disappeared more than a decade ago along a 30-mile stretch of river in the Colorado wilderness. There wasn't a chance in hell I was going to find her, but I'd put in the time. Take some pictures, make some logs, fill out the reports and tell him, sorry sad ass, get on with your life. Now give me a check. I picked up some supplies in Salida. Food, beer, 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 and something to float down the river on. It's not like it's the Colorado River or anything, just the Arkansas. No big deal, just a little float down the river. The children's Chinese-made plastic dragon float I picked up at Walmart should be just fine. The river was unrelenting. I lost hold of my supply bag within minutes and watched hopelessly as it floated away down the river. The current was swift and brutal. Dragon started reeling from fear. I myself began to worry what lie ahead as the roar of rapids deafened my ears. The river became violent, swooshing me down to certain doom. All I could do was hold on to Dragon for dear life. I was tossed and turned like a bean sprout in a Chinese walk until I hit a large rock and flipped. Dragon had managed to pull me from the river and save my life. It got dark and scary. I pulled Dragon close. I'll admit it, I felt vulnerable and at the mercy of the river. I felt so helpless and weak, I, I needed validation of my manliness. In the morning, my Dragon. plastic friend was gone. He was all I had in this wilderness. I had to find him. I had to find him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just trying to survive and get down the river. I had totally forgot about the client and searching for the girl when I spotted the LAPD evidence bag with the girl's shirt in it. Somehow it escaped my supplies bag and got caught up on the bank. 
I did not know if it was coincidence, chance, or fate. But as I looked up, I saw something hanging in a tree. It was female underwear. Was this a clue? I did not know. But I did know one thing. A man in the wilderness, holding a blow-up dragon and holding pink panties, was just not right. I turned to my right and scanned the area. A layman would have continued on, but with my trained eye for spotting female lingerie, I was able to deduce a crime scene. A group had stopped here, four or five females. During the night, the Colorado high elevation had deprived the lowlanders' brains of oxygen. Unable to think straight and restrain themselves from society's rules, they regressed to basic instincts and needs. The suntanned, muscular raft guide did not have a chance. Could one of these belong to the girl I was looking for? My DNA kit was in my supply bag. I did not have a photograph of her and I did not know if she preferred bikini or thong. Furthermore, I had only enough room in my pocket for one garment or I could drown. There was only one thing to do, field forensics. I could compare the LAPD evidence smell to that of what I found. It was a disgusting, a potentially life-altering dark shadow on my soul. But it had to be done. I had solved the case and was feeling good. Dragon and I had become friends. More than friends. Dragon had saved my life. I don't know why Dragon took a right at the fork in the river. Oh well. Bonsai.